Just to know what people go through and how they're grieving and what they struggle with in their own lives is a struggle for me. And uh, just to see them rise above that, I think that their history of how they've come, if they learned any of them Cheyennes, the Cheyennes taught me how to survive and rise above things. Look how the stars shine for you, my one and only you. They're telling you, I, I, I love you. I, 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 I. He had a vision that he wanted to become an itinerant uh, pilgrim. And he, so he went from shrine to shrine and prayed to God. He helped the poor. When he died, the children ran out in the streets and said, The saint has died. The saint has died. And they said, Who are you talking about? And they said, Labray, Saint Labray. Within one month of his death, 100 miracles were attributed to him. And when the bishop of the Montana Territory was in Rome in 1883, he was at the canonization of St. Labray. He was so impressed at his simple life and how he lived his life that he said, when I go back to Montana, we're going to name that mission St. Labray. This is the story of a school, a community, and a culture. Hello there and welcome to St. Libre Indian School. We are located on the Northern Cheyenne Indian Reservation in southeastern Montana. And we serve the Northern Cheyenne and Crow Indian tribe as well as many others. I'm Alexis Braided here, Miss St. Libre, and I invite you to... Watch the next student-produced video that tells the story of St. Liberty Indian School. You will hear words like respect, excellence, integrity, stewardship, spirituality, and justice. The values of our mission statement here at St. Liberty. I hope you enjoy the film. Respect for culture, community, and heritage is no more clearly exhibited than during Native American Week which is celebrated every year in September. <laughs> Students participate in such activities as teepee raising, <laughs> doll making, traditional foods meat cutting hand drums bead work Giant medicine pouches. Cedar bags. Cross our hand games. Giant seed games. Ledger art. Hey, 
sewing. And aerial throwing. The activity is concluded with a power with all ages participate. academics, which is something that every school in America should have or should be doing, and they've also taught me a lot about my culture. Um, I've only been here for two years, but in those two years I've actually learned a lot more about my culture than I have on my own. Um, with being at St. Labre, they've taught me how to do traditional Cheyenne beadwork, I've learned how to make star quilts and traditional dance outfits, and I've learned more traditional stories, and I now have a better understanding of where I come from, and for that, I'm really thankful. Um, it is one of the things that I love about St. Louis. My responsibilities as being a princess is being a positive role model and not doing drugs and alcohol, and having them be able to look up to me as a role model and being respectful to my elders and people older than me and being responsible for things this past year. <laughs> I have been to Rocky Boy Powell, Fort Bona, Browning, Crow Fair, Billings Powell, um, Cody Wyoming Powell. Pro Native Days, Fourth of July Paul, and a lot more. to the uh, Labor Day powwow. As soon as you pull up, you hear those drums, you get excited because, you know, it's powwow time. You know, the powwow already started. Oh, everybody's here. You know, I get to see my friends, you know. So you get excited. That brings light. And that's the power of healing. Because who knows, before you come to that powwow, you were having a sad time. You know, you were feeling down and out. Then when you get there, everything's gone. You know, you're happy. You get to see your friends. You get to hear singers. You get to watch dancers. You know, and that brings joy, and that's what they mean by the heartbeat, heartbeat of a nation, is without this drum, you know, there's no emotional healing. 
The cornerstone of a Saint Louis education is academic excellence. Dedicated, talented, and creative teachers provide the academic foundation for students to pursue their educational goals after graduation. While the core curriculum includes literature, math, and science, horticulture and bee work are also taught at Saint Louis. The most unique features of the school's curriculum is the Bee Work Institute. Little weaving aspect of your beadwork, like these things stitched by you, and I love this. And I like the colors and the touch of the glass beads. For me, it was so unique. And the beauty uh, of the, all the beadwork pieces I saw all around, whatever tried it was. And of course, connected with the history, uh, it's just awesome. Here, J Three Fingers provides a finishing touches for the cradle board that was done in Franklin's class and later displayed at the Hurt Museum in Phoenix, Arizona. In addition to language and beadwork classes, St. LeBray's academic program offers a course in Native American Studies taught by veteran teacher Ken Kenya. We cover uh, the gamut. If you look at the map here, all of these culture areas are covered in my classes with a special concentration on uh, Plains Indian cultures and Cheyenne uh, history and uh, uh, Crow history. And I even teach a college class on Cheyenne history. <laughs> I've worked at St. Labrie for a total of 36 years. I came in 1973 as a volunteer. That meant $10 a week in room and board back in those days. With the students in my classes now, for most, in most cases, I've had their parents as students, and I've also, in some cases, had their grandparents as students. So don't try any tricks, because not only do I know your tricks, I know your parents' tricks and your grandparents' tricks as well. Other classes that aim to preserve the Native American way of life include quilting, sewing, and cooking, taught by Robin Lee. I've worked at St. Louis since 1982, so between 29 and 30 years. I teach uh, Foods 1, Advanced Foods, Child Development, Sewing 1, Native American Dance Outfits, Quilting, and next year I'm going to start a new class called Made in Montana. It'll be run as a small business and students will make um, craft items or food items and sell them. I try to instill independence in my students, um, try to build self-esteem and just an overall love for um, life skills, I guess. People of the Cheyenne tribe got to see their children here instead of having them be sent back east to BIA boarding school or south to Anadarko or, you know, down to uh, Oklahoma uh, boarding schools. So this was something that they, in 1884 that, that came here with the nuns and the priests to have a school locally. There's always a lot of things going on out there in the community and I like to see our students be out there and see them, be part of the dance, be part of the circle and be part of that ceremony, be part of the elders out there in the, in the community because there are a lot of elders that are, are living alone, lonely, and they like to see kids come and talk to them, come and visit them, and ask questions. They like to answer, they like to tell stories. And I hear a lot of stories from the elders. I'm part of the elders today. I'm part of them, I'm one of them. But the older, older elders, I like to really, really just value their stories and listen to them. You never touch another person's face um, because it represents individuality. No, no person in the world has a face just like yours. It's um, that you're seeing family, and so um, the face is um, very sacred. So you don't go and touch other people's face. Yes. And then that you don't do for a prolonged period of time is to um, stare into another person's um, eyes. And I think it goes back to being respectful of their, their face and not touching their face. Through the sports programs at St. Lebre, students develop the self-discipline and athletic ability, as well as sportsmanship and integrity.
teamwork to me is uh, my reaction off and on the court of how like I can set that you know a good example and being a role model and that uh, you know there's no I in team and we always constantly moving the ball around and you know as being one of the leaders I uh, set that good example of not like you know, seeing the thing that um, like everybody like there's a main player on our team. This builds like our relationship together by you know like congratulating each other, commenting each other on how we score. Another program at Salem Bray that develops integrity and character is student council. Supporting each other whenever we need it because we're a small school and everybody knows everybody and whenever something's wrong we all know when something's wrong and we try to do our best to help each other. We're in a small town and we don't really have a lot of, we don't have a very big community per se. So it's kind of hard to raise money, but we do find money to raise and we do come up with ideas to raise money for our trips and our prom and homecoming and all that stuff. A Santa Bray education stresses the importance of stewardship and community service. I've been teaching here um, for, this is now 15 years, and uh, I've taught, uh, I just was calculating the other day, and all together I've taught 25 years uh, in schools around the country, around the world. A service program here at St. LeBray not only touches on one of our core values of, of service, but uh, touches that particular story in the gospel. I think that uh, we want to treat our neighbor um, as we treat ourselves. We want to treat our neighbor with the love that God kind of showers upon us. And so we try to extend that a little bit. And, and so what we do is we, um, each class or each focus group um, from each class will, with their teacher, go out and um, minister to the community doing various uh, things. My particular group uh, worked with the little kids in their little basketball program and we had a wonderful time. And uh, There are other groups that do all different things and so it really depends on, on the group and their teacher and uh, what they really feel called to do. It made me think about the, how the little kids are going to be when they get to be my age and I just I want them to see the high schoolers and the older kids doing good stuff and I want them to be like that when they get older. And I want them to have somebody to look up to, be a good role model, and be a better person, I think. The core of St. LeBray's identity is its spirituality. Oh, spirituality and um, Christianity both believe in one God, one creator, and that um, creator being God is in control of all things in our lives. Our whole life is about prayer. You know, we live a life of prayer. And and all our beliefs are that um, everything begins and ends with a prayer. As St. the Bray's unique combination of Native American traditions alongside Catholic values and beliefs provides students with a blend of spirituality that emphasizes the importance of ritual and the acknowledgement of the Creator. High school, I always wanted to go to Marinol and go to China. And my parents said it would be too far away, so I studied for the, the local seminary. And then when I met the Capuchins, which I am, this is a capuche. And it's a capuchini jink from that, from the Capuchin robe, brown robe. I came out here and it was kind of, my heart was in there. The best part is uh, learning from the people. Just, just being with the Cheyennes, they have, they, uh, they have a real close ties to family and one another, and they respect each other. Recently, Bishop Michael Warfell visited St. Lebray and celebrated Mass of Catholic Schools Week. The last pillar of the St. Liberty Mission statement is justice. It is our aim to create and sustain right relationships in everything we do. In our worship, work, and play, we achieve this through our mentor program. 
I think it's it's difficult for Native American students to to go off to college because suddenly they're you know they're away from home and and kind of out of their element and and away from a lot of the support that that they have. It's difficult for everyone, but I think it's more difficult for Native American students. So we developed a program where we have a full time um, uh, mentor who who works. He has an office at MSU Billings. And he visits every student um, in in the area. Uh, he travels North Dakota, South Dakota, um, all of the schools in Montana, Wyoming. Helps them with um, helps them get kind of oriented on college. Uh, at college, he tries to line them up with a mentor, and um, you know helps them with uh, all of the problems that they run into. He helps them with. Um, uh, uh, financial aid, which which is always a big issue, and it's been very successful. Um, Saint Lebray students go on to college at a higher rate than um, the average, the national average, for both Native American students and non-Native American students, and they also um, uh, retain in college at, at a higher rate than than the national average. So we feel that that it's been a very successful program, a very successful program. St. Libre is proud of its relationships with alumni. Lou Pavic, the oldest living graduate of St. Libre. I was in band for a while. I played trombone in band, and then in my, my senior year as editor of the school paper, you just you can't ever quit learning. I mean, when you quit learning, you quit breathing. And uh, I mean, I still I still learn new stuff all the time. So. Don't be be curious. Want to know? Hey, I want to know what's going on there. You know, this is your world. I mean, get involved in it. Like I said, with that deal over there, if if you if you make yourself obnoxious enough, people will do things <laughs> that for no other reason than to get rid of you. <laughs> I'm Kyle Robinson, I'm a member of the Northern Cheyenne Tribe, and after high school I'm going to go to Salish Kootenai and go on forestry. My name is Quinn Salome and I'm Blackfeet, and I plan on going to college for the next four years and then becoming a cop. I'm Jared from Deputy and I'm a part of the Northern Cheyenne and Crow Tribes. The plans for the future are to play college basketball and to study automotive technology. I'm Desba, and I'm part Northern Cheyenne, part Navajo, and I'm going to be going to Mount St. Mary's in Maryland and studying nursing. My name's Tristan. And I'm Northern Cheyenne. And I'm going to attend college at Montana Tech in Butte. It'll continue in a good way, uh, as long as we have benefactors. We depend a lot on benefactors. It's not government-supported anyway. It depends on the arms and the interests of the people, and it's come a long ways with that. It keeps it going that way. My name is Shannon Young Bear, and I'm enrolled in the Northern Cheyenne Tribe. And after graduation, I plan on going to college and getting my degree in psychology. Daniel Prasad, and um, I'm Ogla Lakota Sioux, and uh, my plans after college are to go to plans after high school is go to college. My name is Maggie Yazi. I'm an enrolled member of the Crow Tribe in Park Navajo. I'll be attending MSU in Bozeman and I'll be majoring in pre-med. I'm Justin Spang, I'm enrolled as a Northern Cheyenne, in the Northern Cheyenne Tribe. I'm going to attend Montana State University, Bozeman, and study engineering. I'm Joe Joe Waxalong, Northern Cheyenne, full-blooded, and I'm going to the Salish community. And I'll be transferring out of there and going to the University of Washington. I'll be majoring in business management. I've got a deal set up. I contribute to the school. I, it's set up over there. They automatically take it out of my bank account every month. So, so I want this place to keep going, you know, because this is my school. And I, so I'm, I can't contribute much, but I contribute regularly. This place has survived for a long time. It, 
Well, the mission itself has been here longer than I'm, I've been around, you know. And, uh, I mean, it's gone through hard times and everything. And uh, it, I just, I thought that was a good word for it. It's a survivor. Hi, my name is Jensen Emerson. I'm a road member of the Navajo Nation. I'm also not in Cheyenne. After I graduate from St. Louis, I want to go into military or go into community college. My name is Ava Turnspliny. I'm Crow. And I plan on getting a degree in pre-med. My name is Sean Reset. I'm a rolling in the Giant Tribe. And after high school, I plan to go to Sales Cooney and major in forestry. My name is Rosalie Badhorse. I'm a proud member of the Northern Cheyenne Tribe, and in the coming fall, I will be attending LaSalle University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I will be majoring in business. Arlen Bordeaux. I am Northern Cheyenne. I'll be, I'm living on Northern Cheyenne Reservation. Uh, I am originally going to go to Salish Cooney College. I'll be studying heavy equipment operating. Uh, my wife, who I met when I was over in Asia doing mission work, um, we have a family now, and we choose St. LeBray. Uh, we choose it over all the other schools around. Um, you know, we could send our kids elsewhere. We could send them to the schools down the street, but we send them here to St. LeBray. They love it here. LeBray takes care of them too, and so LeBray is, is home home for me, and I plan on staying a long time. Uh, my name is Stephanie Prettyboy. I'm Northern Cheyenne. I plan to go to MC Bozeman for teaching, and if that didn't work out, then I might join the military. Uh, my name is Jordan Washi. Um, I'm Northern Cheyenne. And, uh, after high school, I'm probably going to go to Sheridan College or Bozeman. Hi, I'm Kelsey Bartlett. Um, I'm Northern Cheyenne, and after St. LeBray, I plan on going to Sheridan College and getting my degree in business and management. My name is Trevor Little White. I come from the Crow Tribe. Uh, after, one of my plans are after I graduate is uh, I want to go to Little Bighorn College, and I want to transfer to MSU and study um, uh, Crow Studies and get into art. The understanding now, I'm Northern Cheyenne, I'm going to Salish Kootenai College for nursing. I think the potential of all St. LeBray students, you're like a bud that has great potential that through your learning and your experience at St. LeBray, you can just bloom into flowers, beautiful flowers. So I would say you have wonderful potential. I'm Robbie Rodriguez and I will be attending Sheridan College in the fall. My name is Marcia Spillman. I am graduating from St. LeBray and I'm enrolled in the Crow Tribe and after graduation I plan to go to MSU Billings and go into nursing. Cordell Begay, I'm Navajo, going to United Tribes to study auto mechanic. Hi, my name is Ashley Yarrow. I'm from the Northern Cheyenne Tribe and my plans for the future is going, attending at University of Great Falls and becoming a math and a biology teacher. My name is Francisco Ignacio. And I'm an enrolled Cheyenne member, and uh, after I graduate, I plan to be an automotive te technician. My name is Nakota Ishapi. Uh, they call me Tiny. I am from the Assiniboine and Crovant tribe of Fort Belknap and First Carry Kettle First Nations in Canada. And I plan to attend uh, uh, MSU Billings in receive my bachelor's in nursing and psychology and join the ROTC program. Bagakula, Bagshaw, Akbaradia, Delija, Bachikiche, Gashket Book, Hilish, Amacha Ichik Gashish, Balahi, Anna Liza Lagodish, Awa. Mary, Abadadia, is a gay, Bach Fam, Chilgalaku, Oho. While many people were involved in the making of this film. Many more are involved in the daily activities of St. Liberty Indian School and we salute them. However, there is one person more than any other who has contributed more time, energy, and dedication to the St. Liberty community. His name is Father Emmett. He came to St. Liberty in 1954 with instructions to close down the school 
and said he found it in his heart to revive the mission and schools by focusing the attention of so many generous and compassionate people on its potential. This school would not be here today if it wasn't for his hard work and dedication. To him, we dedicate this film. Thank you, Father Emmett. Thank you.